Welcome to PK Theory 4 and today is gonna be a little bit different. That's good. Today's topic is going to be parkour and free running. Boring! I agree. No, I don't agree because I will have a little bit a different perspective on this topic. So, to start what is parkour and free running? Well, first of all, we have to say it's a differentiation in language. It's two different words. One job of language is to make sure that we attach the same meaning to the same words to make sure that we are actually communicating, meaning that we are talking about the same thing. For this purpose, language makes differentiations where there is a difference and it makes no differentiation where there is no difference, obviously. Easy example, blue is not yellow, but blue is yellow, depending on which level you are looking at it. And from the level of appearance, blue is definitely not yellow, but on the level of, let's say, nature, they are the same thing, they're both light. So, looking at parkour and free running, if these two were different on the mere appearance level, then parkour and free running would be a differentiation like blue and yellow. If parkour and free running would be different on a much deeper level, meaning uh, far beyond the appearance, uh, going towards its nature, and we still have to find out what that means, but that would mean that parkour and free running are crucially different. I would say the aspect of appearance should be pretty clear. It's about how things look. And the aspect of nature is of a much deeper, complexer nature. For example, if we look at two human beings and one has two arms and the other has, let's say, three arms or one arm, uh, on the level of appearance, you would say they are different. You would come to the conclusion that a cat is a human because it has four limbs if you would measure it by the amount of limbs. If you look at the life of a cat, there's a lot of difference. Whatever cats do, it's certainly not like humans in a lot of aspects. Measuring on the level of appearance is incompetent to find out the nature of things. Whoa, this path looks dope. You still hear up to this day that, oh yeah, he's good, but he is doing free running or, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing this thing, I'm doing parkour and because of this and that and there. So the differentiation is still around and it seems like a lot of people have the feeling that they're essentially doing something different than other people. And I think one of this confusion comes because people are defining parkour and free running on different levels. We want to find out on which level this differentiation happens. I would start with what is the ancient, I would call it the old school definition of parkour and you probably all know it. Well, I don't know if the youngest generation still knows it. Doesn't matter actually, but I'm just gonna give it here quick and short. So basically the old school parkour definition has the factor of usefulness as an essential part of parkour. So usefulness in the sense of either using being able to use the acquired physical skills in order to be useful meaning helping other people or benefiting in some way the good of the whole thing of the whole globe or you know whatever or it can be in a less literal sense it can mean that parkour will give you some capabilities that are making you more useful not by its physical means but by you could say secondary skills acquired through the training of parkour and this usefulness was acclaimed to be an integral part of parkour now in contrast to that free running basically just had the definition movement is done for the sake of the movement itself like painting you have an idea and you paint it for the sake of painting no second thoughts so that's the definition of free running as i have been learning it uh, by the way i don't know the history about the word free running apparently it was made up for a tv documentary or something like this i heard i'm not sure 
dangerous half knowledge we say in German doesn't matter what matters is these definitions these understandings of these two words are around or were around but uh, nowadays this differentiation between parkour and free running has softened I would say and that's because no one really anymore claims to have such noble motivations behind the training and of all the people I have met and known probably there was not a single person among them who truly has taken this usefulness seriously and if you think about it you know it's easy to see if that is true or not because if someone is acclaiming that usefulness is an integral part of its of his parkour training or her parkour training then their lifestyle must do justice to that noble standard meaning that they are in some way useful to uh, society either physically or non-physically but always ultimately by the effect of their parkour training now i'm not saying that this is not possible obviously it's possible but what i'm saying is it has never been really a primary goal of anyone who did the training of parkour at least as far as i know the people and so we have come to the point where i think no one is really claiming that usefulness is an integral part a driving factor that they are going outside and doing running precisions but the differentiation between parkour and free running is still around these days and nowadays it's rather something like let's say limited to the physical usefulness so the factor of effectiveness is still around and that's the that's the aspect by which you say something is parkour or something is free running example if your movement is potentially useful meaning you can be fast and effective in overcoming some obstacles then that would be classified as parkour anything else that is including unnecessary elements such as twists and you know flips and all these uh, play arounds well that would be classified as free running now at this point i want to show you some parkour examples because you will see there's a lot of different parkour styles that could fit in that first classification of effectiveness and so here we have the in germany we call it nrw style it's from one specific area in germany and there have a lot of elements of bouldering uh, riddle solving you know just take a look i'll put a few clips in there Then we have the other end, let's say Phil Doyle and Kai Willis doing some insanity on height stuff. <laughs> I think we would all agree that these examples that I was just showing you would all go under the main classification of parkour because of their functionality. Towards what is this functionality directed? You know, functionality needs a goal, a purpose. If the goal would be really the classical escape or chase scenario, then we would have to say that they are training for very different, highly specific 
uh, scenarios. The English Tracer is training for a rooftop chase or whatever with big gaps, big distances, uh, parallel wall scenarios, kind of imagining uh, an escape scenario at Vauxhall. Whereas the German functionalist is rather expecting a scenario of bouldering or some tricky movement challenge. It seems that functionality doesn't have a precise definition at all. So it's rather a spongy concept. And if you think about it, is a free runner and a parkour dude starting differently with their sport? I bet that no one who really started parkour was actually thinking like, wow, this movement is so functional towards the goal of overcoming obstacles and thereby being practically applicable to whatever. Probably rather like, I want to be like Ezio, well, a free runner also wants to be like Ezio just with twists, you know? Now for me, this whole thing points to the fact that functionality doesn't really play a functionality role in parkour, but it rather plays an aesthetic role. The movement that you classify as functional basically is not functional because the person wanted to have it functional towards a specific goal, but rather that functionality is one characteristic of his aesthetic image you could say. Now, aesthetic is a little bit of a tricky word because it is uh, rather understood on a visual level but something can be perceived as aesthetic on different levels. Some people are really satisfied if they are solving a movement challenge, a coordinational riddle you could say and some other people are truly satisfied when the movement is visually appealing. I don't know, hook kicks and, you know, fluid movement, smooth stuff and, you know, whatever that could be. So it really depends what are the people perceiving as beautiful. If we make a quick analogy to architecture, there is architecture styles that are very intricate, complex, have a lot of unnecessary details, like, I don't know how it's called in English, baroque, baroque, uh, yeah or gothic and we have other styles like the more modern ones that are much simpler they leave out a lot of uh, unnecessary things basically now this simplicity uh, you could call it functionality because there's nothing on it that uh, has no function basically uh, this functionality plays rather an aesthetic function so the aesthetic function is primary and the functionality function is secondary. And now I think the same thing counts for all parkour people. Which would make parkour and free running basically the same thing with a different stylistic outlook. And I think that that is probably much corrected than anything we have heard before. Wow, I'm looking so German right now. That's fine, I'm German. Am I? What is racism or nationalism else than making a differentiation on the surface level and thinking it's an essential differentiation on the nature level? Now, there's one other thing which points to the conclusion of this video, um, and it is this. Is if functionality would be a, on a deeper level than appearance, then we had we would have much more like these pure strains of parkour meaning we would have less hybrids in the sport but if we look at it almost everyone no matter how much parkour -y he is is a hybrid even the fact that s someone is like specifying highly into one specific direction of parkour um, sometimes even single techniques someone is maxing out double kongs like to the point where you say okay this is maybe too much like you know what i mean so we don't have these purely functional styles for most people you know one year they are more on the parker side and then the next year they're somewhere in the middle and then they're more on a free runny side and then they back and uh, this happens to a lot of people and why because the aesthetic image of movement changes easily 
more easily than a driving factor you know if you start out parkour really with the intention of having a functional thing then your basic root intention of training would have to change in order that you can switch sides that is the reason why we don't have these clear strains of either parkour or either free running but we always have like degrees of shades just like with color so to me parkour and free running are different but the difference is insubstantial it is on the appearance surface level it is details yeah that's it so far the nature topic is a far complexer one i would say maybe not too complex well depends on what aspects you set up as crucial to being or to defining some things nature sounds complicated it's maybe not maybe it is maybe it's not smoke weed every day we could in the future instead of asking are you doing parkour or free running we could ask do you like Ezio or spider-man more and that is a really difficult discussion because most people can decide where am i anything left to say new you know my website already and you know that i sell shirts write comments please don't get too much infuriated about me forgot to say free runners have a lot of more stamina nowadays and this is due to the competitions external criteria which made them train longer runs so much so that we are we have arrived at 60 second runs which makes a fair fair escape so if i would have to run away here in this forest without obstacles well i would lose to every free runner even though i might have more parkour background see so in that sense a modern free runner is more a tracer than a tracer now digest that one it's a tough thing okay we are committing to an insane stunt now no hands <sighs> free running Parkour. <laughs>